Okay, so in this video, we're going to continue some of the stuff from index laws that was done in a different playlist. So make sure you've already looked through that already. I'm going to do a very quick recap here. What we're going to do with these index laws is we're going to revisit negatives, but we're also going to be introducing fractional powers. So as a quick recap, these are some of the index laws that we've looked at so far. If they have the same base and you're multiplying, what you can do is you can take the powers and add them together. If they have the same base and you are dividing, you can take the powers and you can subtract them. You do the top power, subtract the bottom power. If you have brackets, then what you can do is you can multiply those two powers together. So it's either a equals b multiplied by c, or you might just see that as a equal, uh, sorry, a to the power of bc. This one maybe you don't remember. If you have the power of minus b, it's the same as 1 over a to the power of b. And our last one, a to the power of zero, it doesn't really simplify, it just evaluates as the number one. So hopefully these are all things that you remember before you embark on this playlist. So the first little thing, a quick example about how we remember some of these bits. Um, we want to evaluate these things. Evaluate just means work out. Well, three cubed means three times three times three. Three times three is nine, and nine times three is 27. Three to the power of zero is one. And 3 to the power of minus 1, well, using this rule that we've got here, that would be 1 over 3 to the power of 1. And 3 to the power of 1 is just 3. And then 3 to the power of minus 2, well, that's 1 over 3 squared. And we're going to evaluate that. 3 squared is 9, so it is 1 over 9. So the reason I've wanted to look at these examples is just to demonstrate that we can find any integer powers. We can do positives, we can do negatives, we can even do 0. And what we're going to want to start doing is moving into the next part, which is to think, what could we do if the power was a fraction, or even a decimal that could be turned into a fraction? So let's have a look at these things that we've got here. Fractional powers. Fractional powers correspond to roots of the base number but why? So I've got this example of 25 to the power of a half multiplied by 25 to the power of a half. And we're just going to work out what that actually is. So 25 to the power of a half and 25 to the power of a half, they're going to have the same base. Then what I can do is just get those powers and I can add them together because it's the multiplication law. And a half plus a half is obviously just equal to one. So I could say it's 25 to the power of one, which is just 25. Now, the square root of 25 times the square root of 25, well, obviously by the definition of what the square root of 25 times the square root of 25 is, it's just going to be equal to 25. Obviously, you could think this is 5 multiplied by 5, which gives us 25. So by having a look at this, what we can do is actually do like a direct comparison to think about what is going on here. This thing must be the same as this thing. Equally, I could have said that this thing is the same as this thing, but they're kind of all the same as each other. So this is telling me that 25 to the power of a half is the same thing as the square root of 25. And you could see we could do this with algebra. We could have said x to the power of a half multiplied by x to the power of a half is equal to x to the power of 1. And also we know that the square root of x multiplied by the square root of x is also equal to x. That's just the definition of the square root. When you multiply a number by itself, you get the, um, the number that's inside the square root. So by looking at this, we can also see that x to the power of a half means the square root of x. So what this tells us is that if you have a to the power of a half, it's actually saying find the square root of a. Sometimes people find this bit a little bit confusing, but you can literally just look at this top statement. If these two things are the same and you get 25, and if these two things are the same and you get 25, then the bits I've highlighted in green have to be equivalent to each other. There's nothing, no other option that you could have there. Well, what about other fractions of the form 1 over n? So the numerator is going to be 1, but we're going to have something different in the denominator, not just a half. Well, if we think about 27 to the third multiplied by 27 to the third multiplied by 27 to the third, well, we know that that would be equal to 27 to the power of 1 because we add these powers together and a third plus a third plus a third is obviously equal to 1. Well, these three things, if I'm going to think of three things that are being multiplied together that are all the same, that give 27, it's going to have to be the cube root of 27. The cube root is the number that when you multiply it by itself three times, you get the number that's inside the radical sign, inside the root. So obviously, we can do that same comparison as before. 27 to the third must be the cube root of 27. So 27 to the third is equivalent to the cube root of 27, which is obviously just 3. 
And then with this 16 to the quarter, you can kind of see where this is going here. I could say that this is going to be 16 to the power of 1, because I have a quarter plus a quarter plus a quarter plus a quarter. That's obviously just going to be 1. And actually, these are going to be equal to the fourth root of 16. The fourth root is saying a number that multiplies by itself four times to give you the answer. And the fourth root of 16 is 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 16. So this comparison that we've got here, we can see that this first column must all be equivalent to each other. So 16 to the power of a quarter actually is the fourth root of 16, which is equal to 2. I suppose I could have said on this top part that this is 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27, and make it really clear that that first column or any of those columns are all equivalent to each other. So in general, a to the power of a third means find the cube root of a, and you can see that with this first one that we did. And if we have a to the quarter, it would be the fourth root of a. And if we had a to the power of 1 over n, the bottom part, the denominator of the fraction, is going to say that it would be the nth root of a. I don't know, so if it was a to the power of a sixth, you'd be thinking of the sixth root of a, which is saying a number that has been multiplied by itself. Whoops, that's not looking very clear. One, two, three, six times, basically, is what I'm trying to say there. A number multiplied by itself six times. So let's do some quick examples with this, and then you're going to try these six questions on the right-hand side. So with these examples that we have, 64 to the power of a half, that literally just means the square root of 64. We don't put the 2 there. We could if we wanted to, but we just are, are a bit lazy as, maths, uh, as mathematicians, and we think we can't be bothered. Let's just leave the 2 off. And the square root of 64 is equal to 8. And I'll just show you how that works on the calculator. If I just type in 64 to the power of a half, you'll see that you do get 8 in that case. Now, if I do 81 to the power of 0.5, I'm going to be taking the square root of 81, of course, to the power of 0.5 is to the power of a half, so it's the square root of 81, and so it's equal to 9. Now, the reason that we're not actually going to be taking the positive and negative here is because the square root sign is kind of effectively already there. We're not saying, OK, let's square root this. It already is being square rooted, so we won't have plus and minus here. The only time we get uh, plus and minus is if we had something like this, where we are the one that is choosing to do the square root. That would have plus and minus in the front, but that obviously doesn't have the plus and minus at the front, so we're just going to take the positive one. 81 to the power of a quarter, well, that is going to be the fourth root of 81. So we're trying to think of a number that when you multiply it by itself four times, you get 81. And the answer to that is 3. 3 times 3 is 9, and then 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 9 is 81. So that's what's happening with that one. We've now got 16 to the power of 0 0.25. Well, that's 16 to the power of a quarter, because obviously 0 0.25 is a quarter. So it's the fourth root of 16. And again, we're saying a number that multiplies by itself four times to give 16. And the answer is 2, because 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. And then this last one, not last one, penultimate one that we've got here, we're going to do the cube root of 1,000 which hopefully you can spot is 10, because 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. And then this last one's got a negative. Now, you can find the cube root of a negative number, but you couldn't find the square root of a negative number. So we're going to be doing the cube root of negative 8. We're thinking of a number that when you multiply it by itself three times, you get 8. Well, it's definitely going to be a 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And it ends up being a negative 2, because negative 2 times negative 2 gives you a positive, And when you multiply it by negative, you get another negative there. So a little side note, you can find the cube roots and the fifth root and the seventh root. In other words, you can do, if the root number here is odd, you can do that of negative numbers. But if it is even, you cannot do it with negative numbers. So this one's worked and this one doesn't work. You can't find the square root of an even number. You might want to have a little think about why that's true. Okay, so I've got six questions here for you to have a very quick go at. And I'm going to ask you to pause the video and have a go, and then I'll go through them. Okay, so 100 to the half, that's just the square root of 100, which is 10. 36 to the half is just the square root of 36, which is 6. 27 to the third is just the cube root of 27, which is 3. 32 to the 0 0.2, well, that's 32 to the power of a fifth, which is the fifth root of 32. Now, it's going to be a small number here. We're going to think of a number that multiplies by itself five times. It ends up actually being 2 
2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Well, that's a 4, that's a 4, and that's a 2. The 4 times 4 is 16, and when you times that by 2, you get 32. Now we're going to do the cube root of negative 125. We can do that. It's just going to be negative 5. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125, and if you put the negatives in there, you end up with negative 125. This last one is the sixth root of a million. And you can think, what needs to multiply by itself ten time, uh, six times to give you a million? And it's ten. Ten times ten times ten times ten times ten times ten is a million. So a million to the power of a sixth is ten. And I'll just show you, you can put that in your calculator. If I do one, two, three, four, five, six to the power of a sixth, you get ten. So you can check all of these using your calculator. I've been using the button that is above sign, the X with the little Y. That allows you to do the powers. So I can do 27 to the power of a third, for example, as well. And you get three. OK, so in the next video, we're going to think what happens if the numerator is not one. Found this video helpful? Then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel? If you'd like the next video in the playlist, you can click here to be taken straight to it. And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.